Denny's and Denny Hamlin. Yeah, yeah. So to make a Denny's Denny Hamlin car, what what went into this? I criteria I had for myself is I wanted this modern logo on it, where the Denny's kind of like popping out 3D and all modern looking. I wanted that on the hood. Uh, and on the side, I was thinking, what can I do on the side of the car that it's going to pull it all together? So I just start thinking, and I think, like, this Denny's hexagon, once that's on the car like that, that's going to give us this really neat shape here. It's a really good-looking shape. This race car design, it's always, you're looking front to back, right? You're looking front to back because that's fast. That's where the air is flowing. And this has, this design has that effect. It's really strong here. Uh, so... Uh, the back is settled now, so how do I reinforce that closer to the front and reconcile it with the hood logo wherever that's going to be? Well, just repeat it, I guess. And so that was my idea. Denny's logo, uh, boom, boom, boom. It's going to be real fast looking. And so, day one of painting, here's what I come up with. The shape itself of the design, it turned out pretty good. It turned out how I expected, how I wanted it to, but it was missing something. And there were a lot of elements, like the number wasn't finished, I didn't know if I wanted the blue here or not. Some of the lines weren't clean, the logo wasn't clean yet. And when you have all those random elements coming together and like messing with your brain, it's hard to see uh, what's missing from the paint scheme. So I just took a day to go to bed. And coming back the next day, I hop on Discord and someone had the same idea as me. I thought that was super funny. See, we had the same idea, Denny and Denny. And I thought his car looked great. It's, uh, what the difference between this car and this car was the color choice. I was taking the colors from the Denny's Twitter page. And here's the thing about perceived color versus the actual color. So we perceive this to be a bright yellow, right? In the background, we perceive that to be a bright yellow. But in reality, that's, so think that background is some sort of velvet or uh, blanket or whatever, cloth color back there. And the velvet is um, kind of absorbing and diffusing the light and changing the way the color comes across. So if we actually take the eyedropper tool and try to use it on the race car like I did here, oops, then it's going to come out a little bit muted because the velvet color was not the yellow that we were expecting it to be. Uh, it's missing a little bit of saturation and brightness maybe, and maybe it's missing a little bit of orange, uh, although kind of the hue, I think the hue's fine, it's just missing the other, other two things. You can see already that's a much brighter yellow, and same thing for the red, same thing for the red, and that's the difference on this paint scheme. He chose a really strong yellow and red that worked much better. Basically just, just pick good colors, make sure they're not muted like this one. And so after fixing up my colors and fixing up the car a little bit, this is after day two of it. This was progress. I really like this section of the car here, where, again, you have that front to back motion. You see all those stripes back there. You see all the stripes back there. It looks really fast. And in addition to that, we also have kind of the separated region of the yellow and red. And the separation kind of occurs on this sort of axis right here and I think I thought that was really cool I thought it was nice that we got that contrast in this axis and also this axis problems with this paint scheme the shadow and the uh, blocky colors weren't meshing together very well style wise they didn't really fit each other's style and so that was what I set up to do on day three I actually just started from scratch again and just did the design again, because at this point also my Photoshop layers were getting really hectic and unorganized. And after day three, this is the result. <laughs> again, I unified the style, I fixed the red shade, as well as the yellow shade. <laughs> Inspiration from this actually came from this paint scheme from Noah Sweet. You can actually see they're very similar now that I'm seeing them side by side. But <laughs> what I really liked here was, whenever you have a two-tone paint scheme with a strong with strong shapes like this, this darker outline on the background color can really do a lot to just add depth and interest in it. Kind of acts, it kind of acts like that shadow from the previous version of the yellow casting a shadow on the red, but this one is just much stronger and much more unified. <laughs> this shape is really fun. If you want to do that, then that's just cutting in and out and in and then back to the straight edge. 
That's something I also took from this paint scheme here. And so what's the lessons with these paint schemes? The lessons are be careful with your color choices. Your paint schemes can look better than you think they do if you choose the correct colors. And also just copy other people when you're stumped. So thank you to SR2448 Designs and Noah Sweet. You guys really, you guys are the ones that pulled this one through. Ooh, also this little shimmer in the dark red portion. That's something I want to talk about. Let me f see if I can find the layer. Yeah, there it is. So here I have that dark red. And if I take that dark red and then choose a darker red and then get a soft brush and just paint over oh, maybe a lighter red than that. You don't want too much contrast. You just want it to be a very subtle indication. There we go. So just something soft like that to give contrast in the color there. That's going to add that shimmer. Where is it? Oh, it's here. That's going to add that shimmer in there. Also, we have a surprise visit from Pitbull. And uh, mellow yellow paint scheme. I wanted to mess around here with number placement and making the logo as big as I could possibly make it. Now with the big logos here, you do run into the problem of, so you need all of this area here with the logo and the number, you need all of that to be readable. And so you have to be very careful with what designs you put behind it because if you try and make it like a design that goes through here, then you have to do it just right in order to be able to read the logo and the number. And that might lead to you just making basic paint schemes like this, which isn't bad. I think I think uh, you can make a really nice looking car with just the basics. But uh, yeah, here's what I did for this one. Just that idea. We've all done this paint scheme where the side is one color and the top and the hood are another color. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just did that. And then I thought about these angles in the logo. And I thought those were the most important parts of the logo and the branding. So I added that there and I cut that off. And so now we had this really strong arrow shape going like that. And so what do I do to fill in the back? I just add these lines and you know, I make them look real nice. Just mess with the widths of the line and such. And then I just add these indents here and here. And I think us, uh, I think uh, side skirt logos are cool. Let's have more side skirt logos, guys.